Good morning, welcome to BSP Live. You're with Rob Dory and Craig Conley again. And in this video, we're looking at part three of Transform Your Business, Transform Your Life. And we're going to look today at the business vision and go into a bit of detail about that. So, good morning, Rob. So, morning, let's start Rob. off with uh, business vision. I'll get the slide up shortly when you start talking. But, you know, we've talked about personal vision. Why is business vision so, so important? Yeah, it's critical in terms of creating an expectation as far as where you want to get to with the business because in the absence of a business vision which not many people think in terms of what are we really trying to do so in the absence of that you wander and you're hoping that you wander forward uh, the probability unless you get lucky of doing something quite significant is pretty low and so the idea of the business vision, we call it sort of a stake in the sand, where you put a stake in, in our case, it's usually about three years out. So we encourage you to look out three years and say, okay, what does this business look like? And the way we do that in our, it becomes a part of the business plan. It's a future statement saying, you know, our business has grown from 500,000 to 1.7 million. Uh, we've done that by this and done that by that. And that's really what it is. It's the idea is to stretch you out and get you looking out into the future and, and sort of putting a, a reasonable spin on what is possible with this business. So Rob, before we get into the business vision, uh, I know you talked about yesterday about the SWOT analysis. So we'll bring that slide up. Maybe you can just run through that for us. Yeah, basically to do the vision, um, as we said, as I just said, it's a, it's a forward statement. But one of the things you want to do is do a bit of a stock take as far as where you currently are at with your business. And this is the tool that we use. And again, similar to breaking the business into chunks that we've talked about, this is a way to break your current situation into, into chunks. So we start initially with the strengths over in the top left hand corner. And what we're doing is saying, you know, what are the strengths in this business? Could it be your market position, your history, uh, customer relationships, uh, your ability to charge premium prices, uh, you know, good quality, uh, on and on and on. So the idea is to get a list of, you know, what is the strength foundation of the business? Then we usually go across and look at weaknesses. Uh, and ironically in this, the longer this list, the better in our view. Um, because what it does is it gives you a foundation. And if you're getting this list up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that are weaknesses, those indirectly become opportunities. Weaknesses could be the opposite as your strengths. You know, you may not have a strong uh, market position. You know, you may struggle with quality. Uh, you may not have a strongly defined point of difference or, you know, the, the weakness list can be there. Uh, sales driven by solely by the owner, not spread out anymore and, and all sorts of things like that. So we have the weakness. Then we come down to the opportunities. And this is part of these build into um, the business vision you know this is where the business vision and delivering on the vision is going to come out of the opportunities and what opportunities are there you know market position uh, maybe it's acquisitions or maybe it's a stronger marketing program um, maybe it's uh, you know margin management maybe it's cost maybe it's productivity maybe it's stronger partnerships there'll be all sorts of things you can do in that opportunity camp and then threats tend to be external that could be the government it could be your your competitors doing something it could be a change in regulations threats list usually isn't too long uh, but it's just one you just got to make sure you're looking at things and not just with rose-colored glasses you want to keep your head up and um, anyways that's the purpose of the SWOT analysis it creates that foundation oh fantastic okay well, let's bring up the next slide which is the business vision and you can start running us through that Rob Okay, well, the business vision uh, is uh, similar to the personal vision, except this one we usually do limit to uh, three years. And what it is, it's a forward statement about what you want to do. So it's a matter of taking stock. Where are you today? And where potentially can you get to? And we encourage you when you do this exercise to be, you know, don't be too conservative. You know, be if you're going to err, err on being a little over the top rather than under the top, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that this is creating an aspiration for where you're taking the business. And it's not just a simple little statement, it's a picture of the business. So target market, you know, 
is in an expanded market over three years or you're working or you're going to contract it are you going to be doing more of this or more of that so the the market piece is important your quality position if in your weakness you know you've got some quality issues well you know you'll have your quality nailed over the three years scale of operation maybe it's a second uh, facility maybe if you're in the bay of plenty maybe you have a um a, a waikato operation or maybe you're using your foundation where you are to set up a franchise model or something but the idea is have a look at where you potentially go uh customer service checking in on what's going well what you want that to look like uh point of difference is really quite important because in this business scan when you're looking forward you want to try and understand what your point of difference is and the point of difference is in the market as defined by your customer not by you um, so a good test of point of difference you know that could be service it could be reliability it could be your suite of products that you offer it could be your one-stop shop uh, it could be your pricing it could be something that sets you apart and ideally a strong point of difference will enable you to if a customer is able to compare your product or service to a competitor, they would actually pay you more for your product or service because of your point of difference. Quite often people will tell us, oh, it's our service. But if they turn around, um, you know, with that in that same market, in that same environment, we find them discounting their price in the market. So mm. how strong is that point of, point of difference? Not very strong. So um anyways it's we take a bit of time and i encourage you to take a bit of time to understand the concept of point of difference and then what is it in your case and if you don't have a strong point of difference you can actually create one that's your next question okay it's not that strong can it be what can we do to create a point of difference and then the third piece is if you don't have one and you really don't think you can create one believe it or not it's actually powerful to know you don't have one because then you're not confused mm. you know you're to be playing the low price game and low price game can be okay if you can do volume and if you've got low costs so mm -hmm. low price isn't necessarily bad but knowing you don't have a point of difference uh, can be still underpin a very successful business so then team culture it's all about execution you know people say oh our people are the best and our training is great and everybody loves us well really this is the time to create in the future what sort of team culture do you want you know, people where their careers are tied to the success of your business, you're able to provide them learning opportunities, career opportunities, you're able to provide them remuneration such that they can, you know, uh, feel secure having mortgages and doing the things that they want to do in their life. Uh, training, again, in the people area, you know, that's the skill question. You know, do we have the skill balance? Uh, can we create the skill balance? And you do that for a couple of reasons. You increase your productivity, but also on the personal side, it supports team culture. And then the goals at the high level goals come out of the business. You know, this is what we're going to do. Our sales are going to be this. Uh, we're going to be the market leader in the Bay of Plenty in digital lead generation or whatever your high level goals are. And with that, you've got a wonderful picture of what your business looks like three years from now. And that's the foundation for your next step, which is strategy. Fantastic. So we're going to look at strategy tomorrow. Uh, so if you're on the database, we're going to email you when that uh, link comes out. But that was great, Rob. Very informative on the business vision. So uh, we will see you tomorrow. And let's go into the strategy in a bit more detail. Good work. Okay. Thanks, Greg. See you tomorrow. Bye.